Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party. States Ambassador to Croatia arriving. The National Anthem of Croatia. Spicer, Commander, Enterprise Strike Group. Your Excellencies, Assistant Ministers, Flag and General Officers, Officers, Chief Petty Officers, Men and Women of the Croatian and U.S. Armed Forces, Friends, Colleagues, and most importantly, Family of Chief Water Tender Peter Tomic. Welcome aboard USS Enterprise for this ceremony honoring a true American hero. Many people on both sides of the Atlantic, including some gathered here today, contributed to the successful conclusion of a 64-year process to present this Medal of Honor to the family of Peter Tomic. The number of people who have assisted in this process is too great to mention here. However, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the New York Naval Militia, represented today by Admirals Rosen and Lunny both of whom were instrumental in making this day possible. And now it is my honor to introduce Commander U.S. Naval Forces Europe, Admiral Harry Ulrich. Admiral Ulrich will present Peter Tomich's Medal of Honor to the family's designated recipient, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Shretsko Herzeg.
we are gathered today to reflect on the valor of one man on one fateful day. We are gathered today to celebrate the lasting power of one giving act by one selfless man. On a day more than 64 years ago, a day now remembered as the day of infamy, confusion, chaos, and carnage were to be seen everywhere. In the ordinary, the reach for survival overcomes the grip of fear. But in the extraordinary, common men become uncommon. They cast fear aside. They accept duty, knowing time will not allow for survival. We call such men and women heroes. And it is our tradition to remember them for this generation and those to come. For them, medals are cast, plaques engraved, and stones are cut. This is right, and this is just. But it is all too rare that we see the act of one man become the passion and the spirit of many. But so, had, so it has become with Peter Tomich, a chief petty officer whose character and devotion to his shipmates compelled him to make the ultimate sacrifice. Honor, courage, commitment, Navy Corps values. He had all those in life. He gave them to us in death. His valor inspires us to this day, and his spirit has become the patron of those who fall in his wake as sailors and as chief petty officers. What is a chief? Peter Tomich was a chief. No more needs to be said. So today, after a search spanning decades, we present his family the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest military decoration. Medals serve to focus the memory, and memories give life to legacies that inspire and become part of our heritage. To today's Chief Petty Officers, you were given a hero you made him your patron. You chose well. It would be unfair to ask you to do what Peter Tomich did. It would be fair to ask you to be ready to do what Peter Tomich did. Do not feel ashamed if you forget the where, the what's, and the how's. But you will never be forgiven if you forget the why. We live in a dangerous world. Our cause is just, and our freedom-loving partners like Croatia are many. The Tomic legacy touches us all who wear the cloth of our nations. Will we be ready? Will we answer Peter Tomic's charge when called upon? Today is a good day to ask ourselves such questions. Lieutenant Colonel Hertzig, please join the Admiral on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the United States of America's most sacred military decoration, the Medal of Honor. The President of the United States, in the name of the Congress, takes pride in presenting the Medal of Honor posthumously to Chief Water Tender Peter Tomich, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation. For distinguished conduct in the line of his profession and extraordinary courage and disregard of his own safety during the attack on the fleet in Pearl Harbor, territory of Hawaii, by the Japanese forces on 7 December 1941. Although realizing that the ship was capsizing as a result of enemy bombing and torpedoing, Chief Petty Officer Tomich remained at his post in the engineering plant of the USS Utah until he saw that all the boilers were secured and all fire room personnel had left their stations and by so doing lost his own life. Signed, President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt.
Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Strutsko Hrcek. Dame i gospodo, pukovnik Hrvatske vojske i Srećko Herce. Poštovani zapovjednike američkih pomorskih snaga za Evropu, admirale Helvi Olvrik. Poštovani veleposlaniče, ekscelencijo Ralf Frank. Poštovani gospodine admirale, Robert Leni, poštovani gospodine admirale, Rosen, poštovani podpredsjedniče i članovi vlade Republike Hrvatske, iznimna mi je čast kao rođaku Petra Tomića primiti kongresnu medalju časti za izuzetni čin hrabrosti i poštovnosti u jednom od najmračnijih trenutaka u povijesti 20. stoljeća iznenadnom i nemilosrdnom napadu na Pearl Harbor. Admiral Ehrlich, Ambassador Frank, Admiral Lani, Admiral Rosen, Vice President of the Croatian Government, Members of the Croatian Government. It is my great honor as a relative of Pira Tomic to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor for an exceptional act of courage and dedication in one of the darkest moments in the history of the 20th century in the merciless surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Kao pukovnik Hrvatske vojske, počašćen sa što danas u ime obitelji moga rođaka mogu primiti najviše odlikovanje Sjedinjenih američkih država koje mu je dodijelio još predsjednik Franklin Delano Roosevelt. As a colonel of the Croatian army, it is a great honor to be able to receive on behalf of my relative's family the highest U.S. award bestowed upon him by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Petar je dao svoj život za živote drugih, postupivši tako u skladu s hršćanskim načelima kojima su snažno prožeti ljudi njegova hercegovačkog kraja. Peter gave his life for the lives of others and in doing so he acted in accordance with the principles of Christianity that are instilled deeply in the people of his native homeland. Priznanje hrabro mornaru Petru Tomiću nije samo priznanje njegovoj obitelji nego i cijelom hrvatskom narodu. Dopustite stoga da izrazim u ime obitelji Herceg duboku zahvalnost vladi i narodu Sjedinjenih američkih država za ovo veliko priznanje. This award to brave sailor Peter Tomic is not recognition only to, the, to his family but to the entire Croatian people too. Allow me to express therefore on behalf of the Herceg family deep appreciation to the government and people of the United States of America for, his, for this great recognition. Uručivanje ovog priznanja u Republici Hrvatskoj u Splitu čini me posebno ganutim budući da i moja zemlja pretrpjela cijeli niz nesmiljenih napada na svoje stanovništvo i spomenike koji predstavljaju zajedničku kulturnu baštinu čovječanstva. Awarding this medal in Split, Croatia is of special meaning to my country which has suffered many relentless attacks on its people many relentless attacks on the monuments that represent the common cultural heritage of all mankind. Upravo je hrabro s velikog broja običnih ljudi Hrvatski građana poput one našeg rođaka Petra obranila cijelu moju domovinu. It is precisely the courage of a great number of common people, Croatian citizens such as our relative Peter that defended my homeland. Sjedinjene američke države kao simbol slobodnog svijeta i tada su mnogima od nas predstavljale inspiraciju i svjetlu točku svjetske politike jer za ljude iz našeg kraja Amerika je bila obećana zemlja. As a symbol of the free world, the United States was an inspiration and a bright spot in world politics for many of us at that time, as America has always been a promised land for our people. Ovom prigodom želio bi se zahvaliti novinaru gospodinu Vjekoslavu Krsniku, gospodinu Adamu Eteroviću, presjedniku rodoslovnog društva pri Hrvatskoj bratskoj zajednici u SAD-u. On this occasion I would like to extend my gratitude to journalist Mr. Vjekoslav Krsnik and Mr. Adam Eterović of the Croatian Fraternal Union. Te celokupnoj vladi Republike Hrvatske na čelu sa gospodinom doktorom Ivom Sanaderom. 
as well as the entire government of the Republic of Croatia, uh, headed by uh, Prime Minister Sanader. Gospodinu admiralu Robertu Laniju. Admiral Lani. Njegovu ekselenciji Ralfu Franku. His Excellency Ralph Frank. Vojnom ataše u brigadu, brigadiru Stovrudiju. Military attaché in Croatia, Colonel Stovrudi. I svim drugima koji su pripomogli da do ovog svečanog čina dođe i da ovo priznanje stigne u Petrov rodni kraj 65 godina nakon njegove junačke smrti. And all others who enabled the ceremony to take place and who helped in bringing this recognition back to Peter's homeland 65 years after his heroic death. Odvažni i poštovni ljudi zadužuju svoje potomke, ali i domovine, da nastave njihovim putem. Bold and dedicated people obligate their descendants and their homelands to follow in their footsteps. Kad k tome još povezuju dva naroda, njihova je uloga još značajnija. When in doing so they bring two nations together, their role becomes even more important. Ostavština Petra Tomića i ugled medalje časti obavezuju. Stoga sam iznimno ponosan što takvu odgovornost mogu preuzeti u ime obitelji Herceg i u svoje osobno ime. The legacy of Peter Tomić and the reputation of the Medal of Honor indeed present an obligation. I am therefore especially proud to be able to take up that obligation on behalf of the Herceg family and myself. Još jednom hvala narodu Sjedinjenih američkih država i vladi Sjedinjenih američkih država. Once again, thank you people of the United States and the government of the United States. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the New York State Naval Militia, the Commander Rear Admiral Rosen, along with Rear Admiral Lunny. Dobardan. Good afternoon. Ambassador Frank, Ministers, Excellencies, Admiral Ulrich, General Officers, Distinguished Guests, Lieutenant Colonel Stretchko, Herzog, Tonic, and the entire Tomich family, Captain Rice, and members of the crew of the Enterprise. This is an extraordinary day in our history. We assemble here today to honor the memory of a great American naval war hero of Croatian heritage and his family, and to honor our Navy, and to honor all our chiefs, and to honor our two nations. On behalf of the people of the state of New York, our Governor George Pataki, the Division of Military and Naval Affairs and the New York Naval Militia and the millions of New York veterans and approximately 1.5 million remaining American World War II veterans, we offer our heartfelt congratulations on this presentation to his remaining next of kin. This is our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor, awarded to Chief Water Tender Peter Tomich, United States Navy. New York is pleased to have helped to facilitate this presentation to the Tomich family. I am personally delighted and privileged to have worked with Rear Admiral Lunny for many years to have made this day possible. It is our responsibility to accurately maintain and preserve historical information and to perpetuate the memory and hero heroic deeds of soldiers and sailors of the state of New York and to maintain liaison with the Secretary of the Navy. We note with pride that Peter Tomich lived in Queens, New York, and he first enlisted in the armed forces of the United States, the Army, at Fort Slocum, New Rochelle, on June 6, 1917. Shortly thereafter, he became a U.S. citizen. On January 23, 1919, he enlisted in the United States Navy, where he served for approximately 22 years until he was killed aboard the USS Utah at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii on December 7, 1941. For his courage, self-sacrifice, and gallantry far beyond the call of duty, Chief Tomich was awarded the Medal of Honor posthumously by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in March of 1942. However, efforts to locate his next of kin did not produce results. We believe that President Roosevelt, another great New Yorker, would have wanted us to continue in our efforts 
to locate a member of his family so that America's highest military honor could be properly bestowed to his heirs. We are very pleased that this has now been accomplished. Former President George H. W. Bush, when writing about the Medal of Honor and those who received it, said, the Medal of Honor epitomizes the very best of what America stands for, and it honors the gallant individuals who have received it. These special people represent the very heart and soul of America. They come from all walks of life and nearly every state in our nation. They truly reflect not only the ethnic, cultural, economic, and educational diversity of America, but they have one common bond. They are the recipients of the Medal of Honor, the highest award for military heroism. Those gallant souls, in their heroism and in their humility, epitomize the nobility of service to country and of service above self. Americans for all times will treasure the gifts that these brave warriors have given to us so selflessly. A nation can indeed be judged in part by how well it honors its heroes. And so our great nation today, after 65 years, brings closure and dignity to the honored memory of Chief Tomich by this presentation to his family. When the Utah was torpedoed, fatally damaged, and sinking, Chief Tomich was in charge of the engine room, and he returned and he remained below at his duty station in the engineering plant to keep the boilers from exploding, even though the ship was capsizing. He also helped the crewmen escape. By his acts, he saved many, many lives. The Book of John tells us that greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The ancient Talmud scriptures teach us whoever saved one life, it is as if he saved the entire world. Chief Tomich, by his example, was also a great teacher to all of us. The Medal of Honor is a great symbol for us. Teachers and symbols are powerful and meaningful and do motivate us, make us think, dream, remember, and strive to do and be better. They help us to make a better world. We all resolve, and we promise in every way, that we will not forget. We will remember Pearl Harbor. We will remember Chief Peter Tomich. We will remember Chief Tomich. And now, on behalf of our governor, and 19 million New Yorkers, I have some special mementos and gifts commemorating this great day and these precious moments to present. I will present to Lieutenant Colonel Stretchko Herzig Tonich a private letter from the governor of the state of New York in which he expresses appreciation, admiration, and gratitude. I will present a resolution of the New York State Senate and the State of New York so that we record in history for all times in New York, which is a great maritime state and the birthplace of the United States Navy, so that all future generations will know what we did here today and what Chief Tomich did many years ago. I will present today to Lieutenant Colonel Stretchko Herzig special orders that I have signed, giving him an honorary membership status in the New York Naval Militia and the entire Tomich family. The New York Naval Militia is comprised of some 4,000 Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard active drilling reservists. It is a federally recognized force. It is part of the National Guard of the state of New York, which has an agency called the Division of Military and Naval Affairs. And so today, the Colonel and the entire Tomich family will be honorary members of that historic and great force. I will also present a New York State flag that was flown in a special ceremony over our capital in Albany to commemorate this great event it was flown last week. And I also have the honor of presenting a flag from the state of New Jersey, our sister state, 
where Chief Tomich first joined the United States Navy. In 1893, the same year that Chief Tomich was born, Catherine Lee Bates wrote a very special and beautiful poem called America the Beautiful. In conclusion, I'd like to share some of those words with you. It goes, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Chestitam famili ye Tomich. Congratulations to the Tomich family. Fala. Thank you. Officers and Chief Petty Officers, parade, rest. I was given another privilege, and that is of introducing my dear friend and shipmate, Rear Admiral Bob Gunny, and especially to recognize his wife Joan and his son Alexander, who helped in this research effort and traveled to Europe and did a lot of the documentations. Thank you all very much. Admiral Gunny is an extraordinary man in so many ways. After 43 years of service in the United States Naval Reserve, Bob Gunny retired as a captain. Continuing his service in the New York Naval Militia, he was commissioned as a rear admiral by the governor of New York. Admiral Gunny's duties as one of our World War II veterans during the Pacific Campaign included service at Kwajalein and Weetok, Saipan, and Iwo Jima, for which he was awarded the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal. During the Korean War, Admiral Gunny saw combat at Busan Perimeter and the Incheon Landing for his combat service at Honam, North Korea, in support of the Chosan Reservoir Campaign. He was decorated for his courage and resourcefulness in the successful evacuation of 14,000 military and refugees. This dramatic rescue has been recognized as the greatest rescue operation ever by a single ship. He has been decorated by the Secretary of the Navy with the Distinguished Public Service Award and he has been designated by the Department of Defense on two occasions to travel to North Korea to observe joint recovery operations of American war dead. Admiral Lunny received a Doctor of Law degree from Cornell Law School and served for five years as an assistant United States attorney in New York, and he still continues his law practice for these many years. He has served as the national president of the Naval Reserve Association and later as the president of the Sons of the Revolution public service, honor, love of history, and patriotism mark his life. It's my privilege to introduce Rear Admiral J. Robert Lunny. Thank you very much, Admiral Rosen, and distinguished guests. The Holy Bible teaches us that no greater love hath a man than to lay down his life for his friends. During World War II, when I was 17 years of age, I was assigned to the Naval Amphibious Forces Pacific, and while passing through Pearl Harbor, I viewed the capsized hulk of the USS Utah. Only years later did I learn that 58 crewmen including Chief Petty Officer Tomich, are still entombed to this day in that sunken ship. Chief Tomich, a Croatian immigrant in exhibiting extraordinary courage, clearly displayed the true meaning of his adopted country, the land of the free because it is the home of the brave. Unfortunately, over the years, Chief Tomich's family was not located and his medal was never presented to his next of kin. However, I decided to locate the relatives of Chief Tomich when with my wife Joan, who is here with us today, and my son Alexander, I planned a visit to Croatia in 1997. And when learning of this, my boss, Admiral Rosen, strongly encouraged me and had New York Naval Militia military orders issued 
directing me to investigate and identify an appropriate next of kin to whom the medal could be presented. The search for Chief Tomich's family was very successful because of the substantial assistance of many Croatian friends who should be recognized here today. Arriving in Croatia, we received outstanding cooperation from our good friend, a world famous artist, but more importantly, a great Croatian patriot, Zvanimir Mihanovic, who is with us here today. Zvanimir arranged for all of our travels into Bosnia and up to Prolog, where Chief Tomic was born, and he gave us the access and introduction to the Franciscan Monastery, where we uncovered all of the records of the Tomic family. After an extensive examination of the documentary proof of Chief Tomic's background and family, we traveled to his hometown, Prolog, where Chief Tomic was born 1893. We had the great pleasure of meeting his entire family. There we were most pleased to identify Stretchko Herzeg Tonic, a highly decorated hero of Croatia's recent war for independence, who was an appropriate representative to be presented with the Medal of Honor. And behind every successful endeavor by a man, there is a woman. Throughout my investigation and acquisition of all the documentary evidence, I had the skillful and loyal, loyal assistance of Juliana Velcic, an outstanding friend and interpreter, and she is here with us today. One of the most interesting parts of my investigation was to have the pleasure of speaking with some of the Utah survivors. They all spoke most favorably of their leader, Chief Tomich, who held the highest enlisted rating in the Navy. His shipmates remember his quiet demeanor, someone who rarely spoke of a family, but who was constantly concerned about his men. These survivors dramatically related how the Utah capsized within 12 minutes of the attack with the Japanese machine gunning the crew as they abandoned ship. For over 20 years, the Navy was Chief Tomich's family and this was clearly evidenced when one of his shipmates told me as he was escaping from the engine room climbing up the ladder, Chief Tomich was going down the ladder to secure the boilers and ensure that all his men were out safely. In honor of Chief Tomich's sacrifice, the Navy in World War II commissioned a destroyer escort, the USS Tomich. Also in his honor, the Navy established the Senior Enlisted Academy named Tomich Hall in Newport, Rhode Island. Significantly, the motto of the Academy is Leadership by Example. And finally, as President John F. Kennedy stated, a nation reveals itself by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors and the men it remembers. Today, we honor Chief Tomich, and we will always remember him. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Director of the United States Navy Senior Enlisted Academy in Newport, Rhode Island, Master Chief Stephen Yuskowitz. Also, may I introduce Master Chief David Selmier, who is also from the Senior Enlisted Academy. Good afternoon. It is truly an honor to be here today. As the director of the United States Navy Senior Enlisted Academy, I have had the pleasure of welcoming hundreds of speakers to the stage of our institution's auditorium each year. These individuals travel to Newport from around the world to speak to the Academy students. Many speak to my students about leadership and the significance of the responsibility that comes with being a leader. This list of speakers has included our Secretary of the Navy, elected officials, dozens of senior admirals and generals, distinguished professors, top authors, and the top senior enlisted leadership from all five of the United States Armed Forces. Our speaking program is a key element in our curriculum and leaves a lasting influence on our students. During their time in Newport, my students learn a great deal about leadership. One thing that we instill in them is the concept that leadership is really nothing more than influence. I can assure you 
that no one individual has more influence on the senior enlisted leaders and residents at the Senior Enlisted Academy than Chief Water Tender Peter Tomich, United States Navy. Chief Water Tender Peter Tomich, posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor for Extraordinary Heroism at Pearl Harbor, continues to inspire, influence, and lead sailors more than six decades after he made the ultimate sacrifice on board USS Utah. I can assure you that the spirit of Chief Tomich is very much alive in Newport and very much alive in the Chief Petty Officers of the United States Navy. Chief Tomich put his shipmates before himself. The institution that I have the honor of serving of, as director of, the United States Navy Senior Enlisted Academy, is the United States Navy's premier enlisted professional military education institution. The Academy, established nearly 25 years ago, is today located in Tomich Hall at Naval Station Newport in the state of Rhode Island. Constructed in 1989 and named in honor of Chief Water Tender Peter Tomich, Tomich Hall is considered by the Chief Petty Officer community to be our special place of honor, our home, a special place whose passageways echo our Navy Corps values of honor, courage, and commitment. Thousands of senior and master chief petty officers and their equivalent ranks from the United States Army, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Coast Guard have lived and been educated in Tomich Hall. Over the years, they have been joined by senior enlisted leaders from the armed forces of our allies and coalition partners from around the world. Although much of what we do at the Academy involves teamwork, we do identify one student in each class as the distinguished graduate. As the at the class graduation banquet, that student is presented with the Peter Tomich Distinguished Graduate Award. There is no higher honor. Our graduates leave Newport and return to the fleet with refined leadership skills, but they bring with them the spirit of Chief Tomich. Through the Academy, Chief Tomich continues to inspire and influence leaders. Today I am honored to make two presentations to the family of Chief Tomich. First, on behalf of the United States Navy, I present you Chief Tomich's enlisted service record. It details the career of a true United States Navy hero. Secondly, on behalf of the Chief Petty Officers of the United States Navy, I would also like to present you with a work created in honor of Chief Tomich. It is a collage containing photos of Chief Tomich, the World War II destroyer named in his honor, and the home of the United States Navy Senior Enlisted Academy, Tomich Hall. Mounted is our Academy's coin, a medallion that displays the likeness of Chief Tomich and our Navy Corps values and the Academy seal. Please accept these small tokens of our appreciation for the service of Chief Tomich. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of the official party. Up to Aaron Hutt. United States Ambassador to Croatia departing. Commander, Naval Forces Europe, departing. Lieutenant Colonel, Croatian Army, retired. 